Welcome back to Brand Social Life Learning. In this episode, we're gonna show you how you can create uh, this kind of effects using simulation nodes in Blender. Um, so it's pretty simple effects. Uh, basically, we are using this geometry proximity nodes, and we compare it with a value like less and equal to this random value. And based on that, because because we put we put this inside the simulation zone areas it's gonna be looping even though you even if you don't use like scene time it's gonna continuously doing it for you and then it's gonna the value is gonna accumulate so the effects that we get is something like this kind of Suzanne being eaten alive um, it's not yeah it's kind of like dissolving uh, let's see if we apply this on the torus as well um, geometry nodes delete by proximity so we have random points being scattered and on each areas and for each loop for each frame uh, it's gonna move forward and gonna create new points it's gonna eat it until it suddenly uh, the last part however yeah it, it's gonna pop uh, maybe that's something that I need to do a little bit of research but yeah if we before we look into this loop a little bit more I want to show you this one um, I have a video about this in the past so basically if we draw curve on this surface okay let's turn the surface delete all the curve so wherever I draw a curve the geometry nodes this is uh, without simulations basically I sub subdivide the original grid and I'm using this delete geometry right based on selections on face this geomet uh, geometry proximity is gonna look at the points on the curve and Based on this value, it's going to select certain areas and it's going to delete the surface of this grid. So this value matters and we can also use random value, of course. Getting so it's kind of like scatter. We can do the same thing. So it's thanks to this geometry proximity. There's a, there's actually another one. There's nearest. This is something that we need to take a look at some point. So back to our simulation zone deletion. Maybe we can even blur the attributes here. seem to work but anyhow so we have random points first of all we subdivide triangulate I'm um, using all kind of things to change the topology of the original surface and then I put the geometry into simulation zone and inside it's gonna be looking it's gonna distribute a bunch of points and then yeah, we use the geometry proximity based on that points, get the face, select the face based on this boolean value, and then delete the geometry. Okay, so that's a pretty simple effect. We actually can use an empty, for example, this empty, and, and we can turn the empty into a bunch of points uh, that we could actually randomize that a little bit and we if we plug this into geometry proximity it's gonna do the same effects okay and we can control this with uh, this value so what's gonna happen next if we run the 
frame and it start moving our empty it's gonna delete our geometry on the fly it's pretty cool it's pretty cool effect so i found that maybe the real purpose of simulation zone is really to accumulate the value you know just doing things on the fly and it's behaving like a tool almost like a almost like a sculpt tool and close simulations inside the sculpt tool so it's a, it should be like real time and it's gonna update on every frame uh, whenever it advances the frame so we might be able to improve these effects in the future so instead of using just random distribution of points instead of using just this empty or even like a curve that we used earlier we can try using the curve right uh, so if we create a bezier bezier curve and then edit mode go to draw and we draw on the surface of the monkey so currently it's a I mean we can yeah we can use this as a tool sort of and we bring in the bezier curve and then maybe resemble the curve instead of counts let's use the length and then turn curve to points once it is a points we can compare we can use this geometry proximity and yeah supposedly Curve to point resemble curve. This one length. Okay, it's already doing something. Maybe I need to turn this into relative. It's doing something. There. This is length. Okay. So let's start playing this and then use a Bezier edit draw. So we can do this on the fly and this thing i mean it's gonna accumulate right geometry node is gonna accumulate the value so whatever happening here it's gonna be the one that's get rendered so even though our curve is you know it's a it's static objects currently it doesn't grow or anything but we can perhaps set up something here that kind of grow the curve so we can trim the curve or thing, do things like that um, resample curve maybe evaluate you know use the length and we can use this value to grow our curve All sort of effects that, that you can think of so let's delete all this again start again with Suzanne let's see let's delete turn off delete geometry for now like frame one is really really important kind of like a uh, initializing uh, the setup and then you go to you know you want to Let's say you are like a worms on top of Suzanne. So you need to draw all these lines. Currently I'm doing this manually, but you can definitely use some kind of algorithm just to draw this type of lines, you know, like 
as long as it's covering all Suzanne and then we and then we later on gonna animate we're gonna animate the curve so Suzanne let's get deleted over time so this is kind of a fix you know so the lines kind of growing and then you know it stops and then while while still running while the simulation is still running we can increase this value and then Suzanne will disappear completely and it's actually saving it into a cache and whatever you see here it's gonna be the one that's get rendered okay uh, uh, we because we play around with this value over here that's gonna be the one that's get evaluated as well so I think yeah we need to be careful with that value but it's a uh, it's possible to create a cache that's that's kind of a uh, half dirty so the data will this is, will get rendered anyway in this case but if we play around with this value while we are animating that's kind of like a uh, the one that's gonna get rendered if you if you run the simulation again from zero it's gonna initialize based on the last value it's being calculated so something we need to keep in mind maybe it's five curve two points okay that's better so what we really want, okay, so here, something like this. Oh, it's the simulation is running. Okay, we ca we are caching the value. Okay, Suzanne's gonna e get eaten, and we increase this value until it disappear, and we stop. At this point, we shouldn't. We should actually turn off the simulation somehow. Maybe don't start from frame one. Yeah, this is what we want. We don't want to reset from frame one because otherwise, yeah, we we gonna start with uh, this different value for less and then, and then we also didn't animate this. This is something we should animate on the fly. Maybe use the delta time. Anyhow, this. Or use time, scene time, plug in the second into the end. Okay, but maybe map the range. Maybe in 40 seconds go from 0 to 1. Or 20 seconds. Nobody got time for that. I mean, and then we can also increase the length. Oh, play around with this value. So if we reset, reset from one, we have this kind of effects kind of growing. But if we are at the, uh, yeah, I think it's working. If it's pop, then the value might be exploding or something. But in this case, it works. And we can render this out. Okay. So, yeah. The, in the future, we're gonna look at instead of instead of using this geometric proximity, relying on this too much. We actually want to want it to grow slightly, a little bit random than this. For now, I think this should be okay. All right, so it's pretty. I, I think the simplest one you can make using few nodes, just these two geometry proximity and less than equal, and then you can use uh, empty or curve or random point. So that's the basic concept. Hopefully, you find this useful. Thanks again for tuning in, and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.